Masa Yuzaki developed a waifu after his near-death experience. He is one of the many people who wish their name sounded more normal. His loving father wanted him to have dreams as big as the universe when he was born. To honor the kanji characters that collectively translate to Starry Sky, Mr. Yuzaki came up with the name Nasa. Unfortunately, his parents failed to take into account the possibility that his name could mean something else. His name naturally put him in the target audience for teasing. When his name was mentioned, even his teacher laughed. Nasa was initially unaware that he was being made fun of because of his similar name to Nasa. That's right, all caps Nasa. But once he realized what was going on, he detested being connected to the space agency. He then pledged to go above and beyond to earn the respect of others, no matter where they are from. Whenever they hear his name, they will automatically assume that he is far superior to Nasa. After a short period, Nasa is now in his third year of middle school. He informs his homeroom teacher that one of the top universities in the nation, Tsukuba University, is where he plans to attend high school. Although they only accept applicants who scored in the top 30%, NASA is unfazed by the competitive admissions process. He does think he can get in. He beams, look how ready I am, and even claims that he doesn't require any additional schooling. He will achieve the speed of light even before NASA does because he is the one and only NASA Yuzaki. Even when his teacher urges him to reconsider the possibility of failing or perhaps discuss the issue with his parents, he refuses to change his mind. It appears that Mr. Yuzaki's naming of NASA was successful. Kid, reach for the stars. However, NASA's teacher hands him his report card and says that fate is a capricious creature. Everything, including his future, could be in danger if NASA lets its guard down. He smugly responds, I'll be able to handle whatever comes my way, to this. But he has no idea that fate can be a cunning player when provoked. NASA proudly reviews his grades as he makes his way home. Yes, we're back in first. He hears the opening of a coffee can somewhere at that precise moment. And at that moment, my dear viewer, Nana encountered herself in all her beauty. As he stares at the stunning girl, who seems to stop time with her very presence, the boy is rendered speechless. She keeps moving down the snow-covered sidewalk, disregarding the guy waiting for her across the street. Nasa finally works up the courage to approach her because he is curious about her age and school. He calls her attention, but all she does is stare back at him while looking shocked. He's about to ask something when the infamous truck con suddenly bursts in with a loud beep. Then, there is a crash as everything becomes suddenly blinding in Nasa's eyes. I suppose his teacher's remarks had some merit after all. Nasa didn't anticipate losing his guard costing him this much. As he lies on a field of blood-stained snow, he muses, I never thought I would die like this. Even the name of the pretty girl was never revealed to him. The voice of the girl breaks through his feelings. She assures him that he will be okay because more will be required to deliver the death blow. When Nasa opens his eyes, he sees that the girl's right eye is bleeding. How come she's bleeding? The terrified driver rushes over to check on the two, but the girl declines his assistance and requests that Nasa be taken to the hospital instead. Hearing this astounds the man. Nasa threw herself in front of the car, clearly in bad shape, but she still took the worst of the blow. Nasa is shocked, but the girl tells him to calm down before he can utter a coherent sentence. He shouldn't attempt to speak because of how poorly he is doing. She tells Nasa to forget that he ever knew her and even disavows all expressions of gratitude. Her cardigan flutters like a red cape over her shoulder as the unnervingly calm girl turns around. His consciousness slowly fades, and so does the cute girl, as Nasa reaches for her glowing silhouette marching toward the full moon and thinks it was as if she was Princess Kaguya. Nasa is troubled by regrets as his consciousness recedes. Regrets over not knowing his savior. As Nasa allows the voice of love to lift him higher, his body begins to release adrenaline, and he eventually stands up. He surprises Truck Kun's anxious operator who is frantically dialing for an ambulance and even scares her. When Nasa inquires about the whereabouts of the girl, the man is understandably more concerned about his injuries. Nasa screams, now is not the time, as blood pours out of his cut head under the strain. Hospitals are simple to find, but true love is far more important. Thus, Nasa says goodbye to the unfortunate driver before fleeing the scene. Nasa struggles to make his way through the violent snowstorm. When love is waiting to be pursued, what even is pain? To have another encounter with the Lunar Maiden, Nasa is willing to risk his life. His perseverance eventually pays off, and he discovers his stunning crush calmly waiting for the bus. He approaches her and expresses his gratitude to her for saving his skin. After clearing that up, he introduces himself and begins to ramble on about his name. The girl is more amused by the fact that he is still able to move despite his critical and severe wounds. He still says thank you to her. Nasa is instructed to remove his wet cloth by the girl, who also pats the seat. She approaches him very closely and uses her handkerchief to remove the blood splatters from his face. The blushing boy only wonders if girls smell this good when he takes a good whiff of her shampoo. His love at first sight removes her coat abruptly, sending him into a panicked rage. Of course, she has the best of intentions as she drapes a red shawl and her tunic over Nasa's shoulder to keep him warm. He swoons over her clothing's intense sweetness and sheer coziness. Everything is so overwhelming that it could easily knock him out again. He thinks, this girl is just seriously, really cute. 
after some time passes, the calm girl decides she should call for assistance because, well, he's hurt. He is about to say he is fine and stand up when he stumbles to the ground. He might soon lose consciousness as the adrenaline rush begins to wear off. Instructing him to wait while she calls for an ambulance, the girl opens the door as Nasa can only watch. She cautions him, take care of yourself. She says her last goodbye to the helpless boy without turning around. His body is burning, and his awareness is fading. But hold on. To complete what he began, he can follow her. Nasa exclaims that the girl previously resembled Princess Kaguya exactly. He disagrees with the conclusion of the tale of the bamboo cutter, in which Kaguya's family decided against rescuing the princess from the people of the moon despite their genuine affection for her. According to Nasa, even at the risk of dying, one should fight and pursue someone they love if there is a chance they won't see them again. And so, Nasa ends his narrative by saying, and I love you. He asks her out without missing a beat, allowing his late love to return her gaze to the moon. They're traveling too quickly, and Nasa doesn't even know who she is. Nasa instantly consents when she says, we can be together, if you'll marry me. And with that, the boy finally passes out. At the height of spring, when the petals of the cherry blossoms start to fall, Nasa awakens. Her impossibly difficult marriage proposal is interpreted by him as a rejection of her after remembering the events of last winter. His days have since been occupied with studying and recovering from the injuries he sustained. As predicted by his sensei, he loses a year because he doesn't get to take his exams. Nasa loses interest in his high school despite passing the exam the following year with a perfect score. He uses his skills at a convenience store in the hopes of running into his dream girl again rather than continuing his studies. Regrettably, nothing occurs. The now 18-year-old Nasa has made a good amount of money while living alone in a small apartment. But he doesn't want money, he doesn't. The girl who saved his life still makes him long for her. The bell on his door rings abruptly. Without giving it much thought, he opens it, and to Nasa's utter shock, there she is again, beauty. Tsukasa Tsukayomi was his first love. The girl is still as collected as ever and speaks directly. They need to talk about something crucial, so she requests permission to enter. Nasa discovers he has never had a girl over to his apartment. He offers her coffee and then gushes about how adorable she is and how just having her there makes his place smell so much better. She slides a folded piece of paper across the table when he asks what she wants to talk about. It is what? An official marriage record. Nasa is shocked by this, so Tsukasa recollects the moment they decided to get married. Although he agrees that there was a mutual understanding, he finds it difficult to accept the fact that it is coming to pass. Tsukasa snatches the folded registration from her hands just as he is about to do so. He is surprised, but he has never stated that he wouldn't carry it out. He babbles on and on about how he feels about her before finally agreeing to sign the document. While completing the registration, Nasa is a little concerned about the possibility that everything is a scam. Tsukasa, however, signs the form with the zeal of someone who just ate a potato chip with a single smile. Tsukasa informs them that they have somewhere else to go after sharing their thoughts on their upcoming marriage. They travel to the ward office in the middle of the night to turn in their paperwork. Tsukasa responds to Nasa's inquiry about whether it is open at this late hour by saying that marriage registrations are accepted every single day. He learns that, unlike most people, his future wife never once laughed at his last name while they are discussing his surname. Instead, she provides some interesting information about the history of Nasa in the United States as well as how the organization successfully sent astronauts to the moon. Tsukasa adds that his name is pretty awesome after saying. He experiences the burning pain in his chest dissipating. It's as if he was born with the ability to outgrow his name and never had to try. It's as if everything has always gone well for him. Nasa then had a genuine desire to wed this extraordinary woman. They finally make it to the office to turn in their marriage license. Tsukasa is a minor, the clerk notices, though. The paperwork is finished when she provides her guardian's approval. The clerk wishes the couple luck and presents them with a bonsai plant as a wedding gift. Nasa is still in awe of how simple getting married is because it all seems so unbelievable. Even though he declines, Tsukasa offers to hold hands. It's all I can grab with this hand until I die. Marriage is awesome. He gets a little too excited, not realizing he's squeezing her hand too tightly. He fusses over how soft her palm is. He quickly releases us and apologizes hysterically. She claims that she is unsure of the all I can grab concept. Oh no, did he say that aloud? But while Nasa berates himself for being so foolish so early in their marriage, Tsukasa simply smiles and looks at her hand. She strokes his palm and remarks that the phrase all I can grab doesn't sound particularly enticing but she still believes Nasa is correct. Tsukasa instructs Nasa to return first as they make their way home. The boy replies that he only has one bed when she asks if he has an extra futon. Okay, well, I'll see you later, Tsukasa answers before leaving him. The marriage still hasn't sunk into Nasa's mind. He's barely prepared to live with someone else, with a new wife, for that matter, and, as if serendipity is testing him, he only has one bed at home. For more anime recap, click here to subscribe and watch more. Thanks for watching.